The first developer preview for Android 13 has released a couple days ago and I wanted to take this video as a chance to look into what is coming up in the next version of Android. So on the page for Android 13's developer preview, um, which I'm going to link in the description as well, um, you can see that there is a quite long beta phase this time. We didn't have a beta phase that long for the last releases, I don't think. So um, they're getting a head start here, um, re releasing this earlier, even before 12L is out. Uh, we already have the DP for uh, Android 13. So, uh, and as always, here are some behavioral changes and some new features and APIs. I'm gonna focus this video on um, developer preview one more on this right side here as in terms of um, the new features and APIs, there's more to talk about. I have built a small um, example application that I want to test this out with. So let me show you the uh, example application I built. I called it Android 13 Labs and it's running on my uh, Android 13 emulator here. And it's literally the best design I think I have ever done. So you can see here the intricacies of um, this custom component I use called text view, um, which displays the hello world text and that's literally it. We're gonna expand upon that um, now uh, while we look into these different kinds of things that Android 13 is gonna bring. So yeah, um, the code is pretty pretty um, uneventful, I'd say. Uh, so we have one activity here and uh, its layout is literally just a coordinator layout that has um, an, a content layout included inside of itself. And uh, up here is just a toolbar for the header. And then the content itself is right now just the text view saying, hello world. And this is a string just says hello world. That is literally it. Um, and it doesn't have any Android 13 features so far. So let's get started. The first part is themed app icons, uh, which is kind of fun. So if I long click on the home screen and I go to wallpaper and style on this Android 13 device, I can scro scroll down and find this themed icons uh, option here. Uh, it says beta. And if I toggle it on, then go back to the launcher we can see that now the icons on the home screen here, they have this bluish um, kind of monochrome uh, tint to them. Uh, but my app here does not. Um, it is something that you have to explicitly do uh, in order to support this stuff. And if I open the app drawer here, these things are also colorful. I don't know if this will change in the future, but certainly for the home screen itself, um, these things now follow the material you uh, settings that I've set up on this device. So um, you can support this kind of themed icon. Um, and it's quite simple, actually. Uh, what you need to do is um, you go to your launcher icon, which hopefully is an adaptive icon at this point. Um, the Android Oreo, I think it was. Uh, adaptive icons, which cha change their shapes depending on what device um, you have. So what you'd have set up in this case is the background and the foreground. And uh, this foreground here, if I look at the design for it, uh, we can see it's just the default um, Android, uh, Android face kind of icon. There you go. So um, it is the Android head and there's a like diagonal drop shadow underneath. So this thing is a vector drawable, which is good because that is what you need um, for this monochrome uh, material you kind of icon in, to work. So basically what you do is you go to your launcher icon and you duplicate the foreground declaration for the part that goes on top of your background. Um, it should be, there's some recommendations in the docs, it should be a 36 by 36 DP icon um, so that it fits all the different shapes. And what you do is you replace the tag from foreground to say monochrome. And Android Studio will yell at you, of course, because uh, currently this version of Android Studio does not understand yet that this is a new thing that's gonna come. But um, that is basically all you need to do. Uh, and then you have to make sure to actually use this launcher icon in your manifest too. So if I open the manifest here, we can see the icon declaration here. It points to IC launcher. And that in turn goes then to the adaptive icon on devices that support it. So that's good. Um, what you need to be aware of, and I did this wrong at first when I tried this out, um, if you also specify a round icon, again, kind of a legacy thing, um, and the adaptive icon version of the round icon 
uh, looks like this, so it's a separate XML file, here you also need to do this duplication. So um, don't forget it, you have to do it for both the round and the normal icons. So I have done this, I've saved, and if I run the app again, we are gonna see still the hello world text, but if I then go back to the launcher, maybe we can even spot it before it opens, uh, the icon should change to the same kind of light bluish teal uh, tint. So when this is started, I go back and now you can see my app icon has also changed to be in line with everything else. So if we go into the wallpapers now and I change it to a different one, let's just uh, say I want to have this orange one here. Here you can see now I have a little bit of an orange tint behind my icon. It's the same declaration. I didn't change anything in my app, but now I support Android 13. Next up, I want to look at what's called per app language preferences, which is a feature that I've been dying to have on Android for a long time. Um, basically, it means that apps can overwrite the system language if a user wants it to be a different one. So basically, I have my um, my phone set to English, but some apps I do want to maybe have in German or I want to have them in Japanese, some other language. This used to be a pretty big hassle for app developers because they had to build their own kind of locale changing system with resource injection. I don't even know if the resource system does really support that. Uh, you probably have to build your own stuff in order to support it. But now there is an system a system level api for this built into android 13 and hopefully this will also come to a later um, backport release of the android x jetpack kind of family but for now all we have is the native one for android 13 and um let's take a look at it um in a nutshell there is a new system service on android 13 it's called the locale manager and you can get it on android 13 and above and what you can do with that manager is you can give it the application locales, a list of locales that your app wants to support. Let's see how I changed my app. So I still have my string resources here. It's still the same, uh, the same thing. Basically, I have the hello world text. Uh, but what I did do is I created a resource folder for Japanese. So in here, I have an override for the string file for the Japanese language, um, and it gives some translated text. Um, this is hardly any news to Android developers. This is how it's always worked and it still works like that. So I have the JA qualifier for Japanese with a strings XML file. Now, if I change my device language to Japanese, these will get picked up. However, if I have it to English, then I will never see these strings. So what can you do on Android 13? So what I've done now is I've created in the layout file uh, below our hello world text, a radio group with some different choices that I'm gonna add to the app programmatically. Basically, I'm gonna pretend I just support English and Japanese, and then there's a radio button for each language, and then whichever one you choose will make the app change on the fly without actually needing to do anything. So that's pretty cool. Let's find out how that works. Um, let's go to main activity because that is where the stuff is configured. You can see here on the top, I've added a um, list of supported locales, uh, just hard coded here. Um, you can maybe a dependency inject this stuff to whatever you wanna do with your architecture. This is just for sample demonstration purposes. So it lives here, okay, don't sue me, thank you. So um, what this does in its on create is, this is the same thing as before with the action bar and stuff, but underneath here, there's language picker setup. Again, this is solely working only on Android 13 right now. I don't do any API level checks and this will certainly crash if I deploy to an older device. But to be frank, I don't care. This is just a demonstration. So what is happening here? Um, we are taking the radio group into account and we're gonna configure it now. First, we're gonna clear out everything that is a child of this radio group. And then we are getting this new system service here. Uh, we are getting the locale manager, a new class introduced in Android 13. I'm assuming there's gonna be a locale manager compat uh, in the future, but alas, for now, there is not. And then I call application locales. It returns a locale list, um, which is pretty self-explanatory, and I'm getting the first result in that list. Now this can be null um, before the first time you ever set the application locales. Basically, if you get null here, it means just use the system language. The user has not made any decision of what they want to override it with, just use the default. However, because this can return null, uh, I'm going to also fall back to locale.getDefault um, just for my variable here, because I don't wanna 
deal with this being nullable. So uh, if the application override is not uh, is null, then I'm using the system language because that's what happens anyway. Now I, I go through the list of languages I support, the one from above, and I add a radio button for each of them. So you can see here I'm assigning, uh, I'm creating the views programmatically and that's why I'm assigning the ID to be that index so I can look up later which one was selected. Um, the text of this button is going to be just a locale name and then uh, the check state of these buttons is going to depend on whether or not the current locale, the one from up here, is the locale that is associated with this button. So basically if it is then check it, if not then don't. Uh, and lastly um, we only read the application locales before, but this is a var. There's a getter and a setter method. So uh, when anything changes in the radio group, I am going to update the application locales and I'm going to set it to a locale list, a new locale list um, of the one thing that was selected. So basically I get the, uh, the ID of the checked radio button. And uh, remember the ID is just the index in the list. And I'm fetching the locale at that position in the list I'm a, and I'm setting it as the application locale. So this makes it a lot easier to do custom languages, language pickers in your app. If you wanna have something like that, it's gonna be a great experience for your users, I feel like. Uh, and it's really not that much work because all the other resource stuff is gonna acknowledge this override here. Uh, if I deploy the app once again, we can see the updated UI. And also I'm going to be met with a compile error. Okay, sorry, that was my bad. Um, I had a wrong commit checked out and there was a resource that was just duplicated and thankfully due to the power of editing, you don't need to witness it. So here is the updated UI. Um, as you can see, the two uh, radio buttons here and I'm gonna set the language now to Japanese by clicking this radio button. And what you can see is the screen flashes a little bit and that is the app process restarting. And when it's back, you can see now the strings are changed, right? Uh, doesn't say hello world anymore. And if I click back, then immediately it goes back. Um, this is considered a configuration change. I have not been able, as of developer preview one, uh, I have not been able to find out if there is a flag for this for the Android manifest. It doesn't seem like there is a value for config changes here. So um, there is locale. You can override the configuration change of your activity getting a new locale. However, it doesn't seem to trigger when you update the application locales. Maybe that's a bug and that's gonna get fixed in the future, but for now, um, you don't get the on configuration changed method call if you do this config change for your activity. Uh, that, that doesn't work yet. Maybe it's intentional, I don't know. Last thing to note, if you want to reset the application locales back to the system default, um, you can give this guy um, the setter of application locales, um, an empty locale list. And there's a static method actually from the SDK itself. It looks like this. Um, basically, if you say get empty locale list, then you get literally an empty list. And if you assign that to application locales, it basically resets that override. And then uh, beyond that point, your system level language setting will again dictate what language your app is gonna be in. I'm leaving out a couple of things um, that were in in the list of new features here. Maybe I'm going to touch on those in the next developer preview, but also some of them are really minute. Um, there is programmable shaders now, but I don't know how to quickly show you a programmable shader. Maybe I'll do that in the next uh, video, but this is also cool to know. Again, I'm gonna leave the link to this entire presentation uh, in the description as well. There's one more thing that I want to highlight, which is not listed here. And um, when I verified it, then it wasn't enabled, I don't, fit, I don't think, but it might come. So I want to prime you in advance. There is a thing, one thing that I always check in these new Android versions is the list of permission changes. And there's a bunch of new permissions uh, that come with Android 13 as of developer preview one. And one of them that I found really interesting is this one, post notifications. And if we go into the current version of the Java doc for this, it says that this permission is a dangerous permission and it allows an app to post notifications. That implies that from Android 13 onwards, you have to ask for permission. Now on iOS, I think this has been there forever. You have to ask before you can show the user some notifications. This seems to be doing the same kind of thing. Um, but I added it and I can post notifications. So I'm not sure if this, um, if this permission is 
ready to go yet. It might be a thing that comes in a later developer preview. So be aware there might be a change to notifications because it wouldn't be an Android release without changes to notifications, am I right? However, I think this is a good one. It's gonna be a hassle with runtime permissions and stuff like that, but ultimately I think it's a good thing. So yeah, um, that is the gist of developer preview one. What I found interesting, I just wanted to share this with you. Um, if you dare, you can download it onto your Pixel devices. Um, and otherwise there's emulator images available to you. Let's see where this goes. Um, I've seen a couple people who were disappointed by the lack of features. Um, keep in mind though, that this is developer preview one and there's a lot of things to, to be done, I'm guessing, um, before fall where this is supposedly uh, scheduled for release. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it interesting. I'm gonna do one of these kinds of videos for uh, the next developer previews if there is stuff that catches my eye. Until then, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next stream or in the next video, whichever comes first. Take care, bye bye.